Praise the Lord. Today's word of the day. Today's word of the day comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 52, verse 1b, second half of verse 1. Psalm 52, 1b. The goodness of God endures continually. Amen. Praise the Lord. The goodness of God endures continually. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, we on ourselves, uh, there's times when we're good and there's times we're not good because we have flesh and we're just the created beings that are tainted and messed up. But God's goodness never changes. It endures continually. And I think to really understand that, you know, would change our lives. He is only good, just good. There's nothing else. Psalm 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. You see, when we come to God, we can actually have that experience. And we see, we experience his presence. And we feel all the fruit of his spirit and who he is, even a little taste of it anyway. We all see dimly as in a mirror. But then later, we'll really understand. But God is good. And we can taste it and see a little bit of that already because we can taste this. Galatians 5, 22 and first half of 23, the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Praise the Lord. These things are good. And we experience that when we experience his presence, his, his spirit, and we have no care in the world we're at total peace, and all these wonderful things come upon us. So we know that God is good. We also know in James 1, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he doesn't change. He's full of all that good stuff. And all the gifts that we have that are good come from him. And he is the father of lights. And life, it, light itself is a good thing, right? We love, we're not nocturnal. We're, 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 we love the light. First John chapter 1, verse 5 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. It's all part of his being good. He is the light of the world. His word is a lamp to our feet. His light is a good thing. In the new heaven and the new earth, there'll be no need for the sun or the moon because God will provide all the light. Praise the Lord for that. In John chapter 3, verse 19, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. God gives us a choice. He lets us experience what it's like without him in this world. And then he brings forth his light and we have a choice. And when we choose light and choose him, he brings us ever into that greater light. But some people he gave free will, chose the darkness instead. But if God is only good, why do we experience adversity? Why do we get persecuted? Why do we fail? Why, why is all this struggle if God is only good? Romans chapter 2, verse 4, one of the reasons is that when we're still in the world, it tells us, God's word tells us, or do you despise the riches of his goodness? There it is. Forbearance and long suffering. There's the patience. Not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Praise the Lord. We had no hope. We had no salvation unless God in his goodness granted us repentance. He let us see the truth and granted us repentance that we would turn from our evil ways and come to him. That was the reason for whatever tribulation we were facing when we were lost. But then again, even now, as we walk with him as his children, we see like Joseph saw all kinds of adversity while he was walking with God. He was God's son but he was almost killed, thrown into a pit, sold as a slave, falsely accused, thrown into prison. Why, 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 if God is good, does those things happen? Genesis 50, verse 20. But he says, 
when he got the revelation, he told his brothers, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about this as it is this day to save many people alive. Joseph had to go through those things to become fruitful to save many people. We have to go through things to become fruitful to save many people. God does the saving, but he uses those he's sanctified, that he's broken down and reshaped. And so everything we face, every time we get offended, all those things are working for our good because God is good. Praise the Lord. So we can say it like it says in Psalm 107, verse 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. Thank you for reminding us that not only are you so in control, but everything is good. Everything is good. It may not be pleasurable for now, but because you, you chastise your children because you want us to be fruitful, it's good. It's for our good. And you're a good father who doesn't, doesn't vary. You're just there good and always wanting the best for us. And we thank you for us and even the lost out there. That's why you allow what seems like chaos in this world. But no, you want them to give them repentance. You want them to come to you. And you want us to be transformed into your image so that the world can see you through us. Thank you for your goodness. Help us remember this and give us a heart of thanksgiving wherever we go, whenever we are awake, and even when we sleep. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. That is our word of the day. Praise the Lord. Amen.